Welcome to our broadcast for today. Please stay where you are and get ready to be blessed. Get ready to be positively impacted by the word of God. Did you know that anyone who uses a computer and the internet knows that you often will need a password. Actually, some use as many as four passwords in order to get to different websites because many of these websites have their rules and regulations about what your passwords must comprise of. And it can be a challenge, real challenge, to remember which one they have used for a given site, especially if they have not visited that site in a while. Passwords are good, at least for your security, but it can be a big headache. You know what I want to do today on this broadcast? I want to recommend a password for you today. Yes. It is a spiritual password that gives you access to many, many, many spiritual sites. As a matter of fact, this password will give you access to all spiritual sites. What is the password you ask? I will tell you in a few minutes when we get into the body of the sermon. Please stay where you are. You're going to be blessed today. But I don't want you alone partaking of this blessing. Please notify a friend, tell a neighbor, and share the link to the platform you are listening or watching us on. Everyone deserves to be part of this. While you do that, let me go ahead and make my usual announcements. I would like to invite you to please check us out on Bishop Itiola's podcast. You can access that podcast by downloading my podcast app on the Google Play Store for those of you who use the Android phone. Or you can listen directly on the Spreaker app, which can be downloaded on both the Android and the Apple phone. Spreaker is spelled as it is pronounced, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. You'll be joining listeners from over 50 countries around the world that have downloaded over 122,000 episodes. Please help us tell others. And don't forget to share with them that we're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, and of course, we're on MixLR. We're also on television on RBS TV 13 in Guyana every Saturday from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. local time. And we also feature in all 23 Caribbean island countries through Mercy and Truth TV in Jamaica. That's every Saturday from 2.30 to 3.30 p.m. local time. And every Wednesday early, early in the morning, at 1.30 a.m., that's local time also. My prayer, as always, is that God will bless the owners of those stations and the employees and everyone that is connected to them. Give them long life. Give them strategies for expansion. We we'll pray that the Lord will bless the great countries of Guyana, Jamaica, and every other Caribbean island country. And please don't forget to join us and listen to us on our own radio station, Fresh Waves Radio. We're on the air 24 seven. And on that station, you can listen to a variety of programming that will surely be a blessing to your soul. Fresh Waves Radio. You can download the app for both the Android and the Apple phones from their respective app stores. Just type Fresh Waves Radio Install the app, and you are good to go. It's all free. My only plea, help us spread the word so that others can listen in and be blessed. Don't forget to join me on Thursday or on Friday this week, 7 p.m. New York time, on my personal Facebook page, and also 
on all the other handles that we are on. We pray 7 p.m. New York time. It's one hour. And many people's lives have been impacted and chained by these prayers. I can guarantee it. A trial will get you hooked. And it's a good, good, good experience to be hooked on. So please join us this Thursday, this Friday, for a life-changing experience praying at the throne of mercy. Those are my announcements for today. Let's ask God to help us for this broadcast. Father, we come before you knowing that without you we can do nothing. I ask that you will anoint me to speak and you will anoint your people to hear. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. I'm reading Matthew 27, 50 and 51. The Gospel of Matthew. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. One of the biggest frustrations is when I go online to pay a bill. It's convenient or to go check my bank account. That's convenient too. Or you want to download a song, or one of the other several things that you want to do online. And then your password doesn't work. Maybe I forgot my password. Or maybe I wrote it down in a way that I did not put the block letters where they should be, or whatever it is that is missed. But the password is incorrectly put in. So, not recognized. The result is the same. Access denied. Have you ever had that? Access denied. And you know you own this email, but you are denied access. You know you own this bank account, but you are denied access. Because your password is not correct. So you're able to get in. Website passwords can be challenging, even sometimes frustrating. You know what? There are so many because different sites will tell you these are our rules and regulations. So you might have three or four or five different passwords. And then you got to put the one on your phone too. So how in the world can we remember them all and get access to our online sites? Personally, I can't. But did you know that membership and access to God's family also requires a password? Not one with capital letters or small letters or numerals or general characters, but one that is prescribed by heaven himself. And by that, I mean God. You know the password to access God's family? You know the password to access every other blessing that heaven gives to mankind? The password is very simple, J-E-S-U-S, -S, Jesus. He is the password. How did he become the access word to the kingdom of God? You see, by dying on the cross for us, Jesus met God's requirement for punishment. And by rising from the dead, he defeated Satan for us, and now he did all the work for us so we can have access to what we need from our Heavenly Father. A relationship with the Father here on earth, a promise of eternal life in heaven, and access to many blessings that accompany salvation, Jesus Christ 
makes it possible. And he's the password. He said, I am the way. He said, I am the truth. And he said, I am the life. And I am the password, if I may add that. No one comes to the Father. No one get access to the Father except through me, Jesus Christ said. Now, throughout all biblical history, man has always had limited access to God. Yes. God will do amazing works, as you all know. God will speak through the prophets to his people. God will commune with the likes of Abraham and Isaac and Moses and many others in various ways. But total, complete access to the presence of God, it never happened during the time of the sacrificial system. It just did not. Access to the presence of God, it only happened once a year when the priest will go into the Holy of Holies to sprinkle blood on the mercy seat for the purpose of atoning for the sins of the people. Now that lack of full access to God was symbolized by the veil or the curtain that will hang in the tabernacle and then in the temple. And it will separate the holy place which hosted the lampstand and the showbread from the most holy place, which held the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat, and the very presence of God. The veil that I just talked about is described in Exodus 26, 31 to 33, as blue, as purple, and as red with the pictures of angelic beings on it made of twisted fine linen. Now, you know that man called Josephus, the Jewish historian, highly respected. In his writings, he describes the veil in the temple as being 60 feet high and four inches thick and took 300 men to hang. It was said that even a team of horses could not have pulled that thing apart. What a massive veil. What a big impenetrable symbol of our lack of access to a holy God because of our iniquities. In Matthew's account of the gospel, in the very next verse that we read, after Christ takes his last breath on the cross. Matthew says that the veil of the temple was torn into two. Because of Jesus' death on the cross, people, our sins can be forgiven and we can have full access to a relationship with God. The veil in the temple was no longer needed, glory to God. The writer of the book of Hebrews puts it this way in Hebrews 10, 19 and 20. He compares the flesh of Jesus to the veil as the flesh of Jesus was ripped on the cross. So too was the veil separating us from God ripped into two. We can now enter into the holy place we can now go in into the presence of God with confidence because of the blood of Jesus. The death of Christ, the burial of Christ, the resurrection of Christ will become the perfect password for us to gain full access to God Almighty. This perfect password of Jesus is free to you and me. Yes, I've never come across any website where they make you pay for a password. Same thing with heaven. Although it costs God his only son, although he provides for us forgiveness of sin, although he provides us eternal life and full access to the creator, 
of the universe, when we come to him in faith, it is free. Wow. J-E-S-U-S. So, so far now you've seen that Jesus is the password to God. Jesus is the password to heaven. Based on the scripture we read from John 14, 6, which says, Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me, the password to heaven. I want to ask you a question. Have you used that password? Does that password dwell in your heart? Does that password dwell in your life? When it's all over here on earth, you have to go to the great beyond. They will ask you if you have Jesus. If you don't have Jesus, there is no entry to heaven. But I got some good news for you. That same password that takes you to heaven is the same password that gives you access to many blessings that bring heaven down to man on earth. Jesus takes man to heaven. Jesus brings heaven down to man. So what I want to do now is to go forward and share some of the blessings that you can access just by using the name of Jesus. Just mention his name and the door to many blessings will be open for you. You ready? Come with me. Number one, Jesus is a password that guarantees answers to prayer. There are many names that many people use in praying today, but there is no guarantee that prayer will be answered in those names. But in the name of Jesus, answer to prayers, among other things, are guaranteed. John 16, 23. These are the words of Christ himself, our password. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Isn't that beautiful? You wonder why we pray in the name of Jesus? Because that's the password to get access to God and to get access to what we need from God. That's about prayer. But if you need also to cast out devils, if you need also to see signs and wonders, walked by the power of God, the same name is your password. That's the name that makes devils tremble. In Mark 16, 17, we are told, these signs shall follow them that believe. You know what the next three words are? In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Five specific things are mentioned in those two verses. They are made to happen by this powerful password. Jesus said, number one, you will have a pass into the realm of casting out devils. And I can say that by virtue of our ministry, cast out so many devils in Africa, in Asia, in America, all over, in the name of Jesus. They fear that name. But number two, speaking new tongues in that powerful name. Number three, you can take up serpents if you ever have to. Not those who tempt God and bring serpents and look for serpents to carry in their hands. Many of them have died in the, in the process. What if it happens like Paul the Apostle? 
that a serpent fastens to you, you can in the name of Jesus fling it into the fire and it will not hurt you. In the name of Jesus also, you can drink any deadly thing without harm. That's not tempting God either. But if you happen to drink any deadly thing and now you find out that you did, not because you are tempting God, it says it's not going to bother you. And then number five, it says you can lay hands on the sick and you can see them recover. But all these have to be done in the name of Jesus Christ. What a powerful password God has given us, not only to get into heaven, but to bring heaven down into your circumstances. Yes, his name is the password, but there is more. His name also is the password to wonder after wonder after wonder. Look at it in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 30. By stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done, how? By the name of thy holy child Jesus, is the password to doing wonders. Acts chapter 16, verse 18, and this did she many days, but Paul being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that same hour. The name of Jesus is a powerful name and wonders can be walked in the streets, in the church, in the homes at the mention of that password. The name Jesus also is a password for the walking of miracles. Acts chapter 3, verse number 6. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Listen to the next statement. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And you know what happened in that case. He rose up and walked because Peter had enough faith to use the password. If you use the password, a correct password, you will get into any website that that password is connected to. And this password is connected to miracles. Acts chapter 3, verse 12 to verse 16. Let me read it. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this, or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we have made this man to walk? The God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But he denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. And you killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. Look at the next statement. And his name, through faith in his name. I pray for you that you will have faith in the name of Jesus. He said, and in his name and through faith in his name hath made this man strong whom ye see and know ye the faith which is by him hath made him this perfect soundness, has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. The name of Jesus can bring perfect soundness to whatever is not sound in your life. You know, there are times when wholeness is needed. Wholeness physically, wholeness spiritually, wholeness financially and emotionally and on and on and on. The same name that opens heaven for us, it also gives us a pass into whatever wholeness that we desire in our lives. Look at Acts of the Apostles chapter four, 
in verse 10, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, by the name of Jesus Christ, whom God has raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand before you whole, W-H-O-L-E. And in Acts chapter 9, verse 34, we read, And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ, thy password, make it thee whole. Arise, make thy bed, and he rose up immediately. This is beautiful. This is rich. And this is so encouraging. The name of Jesus can make it all right for you. The name of Jesus can make you whole. Well, let's move on. That same name is also the password to making powers bow before you. There are a lot of wicked powers in this world. They don't fear your name. They don't fear any other name. But if you will bring the name of Jesus before them, they will start to tremble. Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 tells us, Therefore God has highly exalted him to the place of highest honor, and he has given him the name that is above every other name. What does it say? That at the name of Jesus, the password, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and underneath the earth. Yes. When you are in places where evil is rampant and in operation, take the name of Jesus with you. It's a powerful password that gets things done. What about supernatural protection? Who doesn't need protection in this very evil world? The password to that realm is also that powerful name, Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10, that the name of the Lord, you got it, is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. How the devil doesn't want you to know that one. His entire profession is to steal, is to kill, and to destroy. So when you start using the name, this password, to protect yourself, to protect your family, to protect your property, the enemy will go out of business in your neck of the woods. He may operate in other places where they don't know about the name of Jesus, but concerning you and your family and everything connected to you, oh, the enemy will not be able to operate. Canceling his plans, using the name of Jesus, will stop him from oppressing you and your family. will be able to keep you safe. Let me share with you two stories that were told by a man of God, and I believe these are true stories. He put it this way. And there was a pastor of a church in Los Angeles who spent his lifetime serving God and he was not a spiritual novice. He was a good man. He was a honest man. He was God-loving, God-worshipping man. And he knew about spiritual laws. So what happened? One day he was walking home from church. It was in the evening. When he noticed four men following him behind. They kept getting closer and closer and closer. So he, you know how you know something is not right? He knew something wasn't right. He tried to run. At that time, he was in his 60s. And he tried to run from them. And they kept on pursuing him. He was able to run to the front porch of a nearby home. And that house happened to be a house belonging to one of his members. So he started banging the door and banging the door and banging the door. So his members came out, opened the door and saw that it was the pastor. But he also saw that some bad people were behind him. So they just slammed the door and left him outside. 
This pastor was in real trouble. So what did he do? He grabbed a broom from the front porch and started trying to fight off those wicked men. Then one of them pulled out a weapon and he knew this is real trouble. Suddenly, suddenly, it dawned on him that he needed to use the name of Jesus. So he yelled out, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, touch not God's anointed, touch not God's prophet, and do him no harm. Then immediately he said that. Those men backed off out of the sidewalk and he kept pointing his finger at them and saying, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Guess what happened? True story. All of them ran off. He didn't need any physical strength. He didn't need help from anybody. He needed one thing and he used that one thing. The password to our protection. The name of Jesus drove danger far away from him. The name of Jesus is your supernatural protection. It's your emergency number. It's your rescue vehicle all wrapped into one. It responds immediately. It acts perfectly and gets the job done without delay. It should always be your first line of defense and it will help you when there seems to be no way out. You need protection? Get this password, my friend, and make sure you use it. The second story this man of God told was what happened to a Christian man who was on a 747 airplane that crashed into another commercial airline, killing most of the passengers. Both planes went down, and both planes were on fire. All the exits were blocked and engulfed in flames. And of course, he was trapped inside with many others. In that moment of impossibility, he did what he knew to do. He called on that wonderful name, the name of Jesus. Now, before he had left on his trip, he had prayed over his travel and believed God for safety. He put his faith in the name of Jesus before he even left. And now as he called on the name of Jesus again, the next thing he knew was that he was out on the wing. He didn't use an exit. It was just like he was translated out of the airplane. And suddenly he was out of danger without any natural explanation. Your password, the name of Jesus. The one that the scripture we read earlier said is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Put in the password. When there is danger surrounding you, victory and protection shall be your portion. Another great truth concerning this password is that it opens the door to receiving whatever is needed to do his work. And this blesses me because I do God's work. That's my profession. And I know how the name of Jesus has helped me many, many, many times. Look at an amazing story, an amazing story in Luke chapter 19 beginning in verse number 28. And when he had thus spoken, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass, when he was come nigh to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples. What did he send them for? He said, go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering ye shall find a colt tied, whereon yet 
Never man sat. Loose him and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, now that's the key here. If any man ask you, why do you lose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, listen to it, because the Lord hath need of him. Tell him the Lord needs it. Bring my name up. Once they hear my name, they will let you take it. Beautiful name. In other words, he said, just mention my name. It is the password that will get the man to, re to release the donkey that we need for ministry. Many are the things that we need for the work of ministry today. So, sometimes it's a building. At other times it's a van or a bus. Sometimes it's airtime for TV or radio. Sometimes it's musical instruments. The list of what is needed, they're endless. Well, there is a password to the supply of this ministry needs. My God shall supply all your needs. The mention of his name, the name of Jesus, it opens the door for divine provision for ministry work. You know, God can choose to supernaturally meet those needs. And like in this case, it can influence someone to meet the need. And all they needed to present was the name of Jesus. What do you need in your ministry? What do you need in your church? Have you prayed about it before you go get a loan? Have you prayed about it before you go to even raise a fund? Have you talked to Jesus about it? Have you commanded money to come in unexpected ways in the name of Jesus? Jesus Christ is our password to the donkeys we need for the work of the ministry. So it is a password that opens unto us various types of spiritual websites. Remember what I said so far. Jesus is the password to God and to heaven. Number two, Jesus is the password that guarantees answers to prayers. Number three, if you need to cast out devils and see signs and wonders walked by the name of God, Jesus is the password. Number four, for the walking of miracles, Jesus is the password. And for whatever wholeness you desire, whatever wholeness you desire, Jesus is the password. If you want to make powers, principalities, bow before you, Jesus is the password. Number seven, if you need supernatural protection, Jesus is the password. Haven't you seen people who are in accidents, automobile accidents, motorcycle accidents, and all they did was shout, Jesus, and God protected them. And I also told you that this name opens the door to receiving whatever you need for his work. And I'm a living witness to that. I've seen God miraculously and graciously, I've seen him provide for his work just by calling on the name of Jesus. Having said that, I have to preach a balanced message today. There is one condition that you must pay attention to if this password is to work for you. Of course, I don't want you to leave this broadcast and start using the name of Jesus for these eight things I've mentioned and many other things. The password only works by relationship to the one whose name you use. If you have no relationship with Jesus, it's not going to work for you. You have to have a relationship with him. When you put in the password, J-E-S-U-S, heaven looks down and it says, who is using this password? 
If it's someone that has a relationship with Jesus, the website of heaven opens. But if you don't, it's going to give you an error message back. And some people learned that the hard way. They didn't have a relationship with Jesus. And they just saw those who had a relationship using the name Jesus, using the password, and they fail woefully. It's in Acts chapter 19. I'll read from verse number 12. Very interesting passage of scripture. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, I like that description, vagabond, exorcists took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, I adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. You see, you see where the problem is? They don't have a personal relationship to be able to say, Jesus whom I preach. They say, Jesus whom Paul preached. And there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jew and chief of the priests, which did so. It's so sad. These were children of the priests, and they had no relationship with Jesus that their fathers preached. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? That's why I said this thing never works unless there is a personal relationship, unless you know him. That's the song we used to sing in the South. It's a black gospel song. Do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know Jesus Christ, God's son? And then you repeat, yes, I know him. Yes, I know him. Yes, I know Jesus Christ, God's son. Do you know him? All right? And the evil spirit answered, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. The password never worked. These are hackers. That's the best way I can describe them. They were hacking into what did not belong to them, and they got caught in the act. I like how they were appropriately named vagabonds. They set out to use the name of Jesus that they had no relationship whatsoever with. The result, as you can see, was catastrophic. What a shame to them, and what a shame it brought upon their parents who were priests. So it is with anyone who attempts to do what these people did without knowing Jesus. There must, I repeat, there must be an intimate relationship with the Lord before his name can be used to do exploits. And just go around calling the name of Jesus, you can get in trouble. So we can safely, safely say, that those who only have the name of Jesus on their lips, but not in their hearts, they are treading on very, very dangerous grounds. They are assuming that they are going to heaven. They are assuming that they can use the password to get a pass into the nine blessings or eight blessings that I just mentioned earlier, but it's not possible because there's got to be a relationship there. My question to you today is very simple. How is your relationship with Jesus? Work on that first before trying to get that name to open the websites of heaven for you. If you don't have that name, you don't have access. You'll be regarded as a hacker trying to hack into what does not belong to you. Well, so far, so good, but I have a final thought before I let you go. It's about something that is often experienced with passwords. We all have passwords and we all use them. I'm talking about when you forget your password. Did you know that's a distinct possibility? I didn't say that's what happens all the time, but it's a distinct possibility that you can forget 
your password. For whatever reason, you try to log in and the site will not open. Your bank account will not open because you put in an incorrect password. In most cases, if you enter the wrong password too many times, your access is not only denied, your access is blocked. In fact, most sites will say three strikes and you are out. Even though it's your email now and you own what is in it, but a wrong password will not get you through. And that's the way the blessings of heaven are. What is in there stored for you Great blessings, great promises in heavenly places, things that God has reserved for you, but they are there, inaccessible, because you don't have the password. Maybe many of you used to have the password, but now you've forgotten the password. Yes, what belongs to you is in there, but you can't access it. You know, this is so sad that many of us are used to have good relationship with God, we lost those relationships and the blessings are still there, but you cannot access them. Your bank account money is there, but you cannot access the money because you don't have your password. You want to go to the ATM, put in your password, you put in the wrong password, and there are thousands of dollars in your, in your bank account, but you cannot access them. See? When you don't remember your password, when you've lost your password, you cannot access what is yours. Are you standing right now at the gates of heaven, unable to have it open because they tell you to put in Jesus and you're spelling Jesus backwards because you lost your relationship with him? The good news is here though. And it's that there is provision for recovery. There is provision for recovery. If you've ever been on a website where you have to put in your password, you will find three words underneath the place that you are supposed to put in your password. You know what those three words are? It's followed by a question mark. Forgot your password? Forgot your password? Listen, once you admit that you've forgotten your password, you just click those words, forgot, yes, I forgot my password. Then provision can be made for you to correct your mistake and be able to ultimately log in. I think the greatest mistake people are making today is that they've forgotten Jesus. But they are still able to sing Amazing Grace. They are still able to recite John 3, 16. And they are going around saying they know Jesus. They know Jesus Christ, God's Son. When it's all past tense, it's not current. Is your relationship with Christ current? Or has it expired? You can correct that mistake and be able to ultimately log in again. Let me show you something. In Revelation chapter 3, reading there in verse number 1. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain and are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. What a classic case of forgotten password. They had a form of password, but the power to open the sites were not in the password. They had a name that they lived, but they were dead. It's like you putting a wrong password in a site. It looks like a password that can open any site, but it's dead. 
is useless. It cannot open the website. That's like having a name that you leave, but you are dead. The password that these people, I'm talking spiritually, were inputting into their Christian work was not the original one they signed up at first. The password they had, as it were, was an imperfect one. He said, I've not found your work perfect before God. And that's the problem with passwords that will not go through and end up being denied. It's a password, all right, but it's an imperfect password. Where is your password? What is your password? Is it the one? that you use originally? When you first knew Christ 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 30 years ago, are you still holding on to that password, the real Jesus, not the watered down Jesus that you are carrying around today? Old glory, not current glory. So the way out is very simple, people, is to admit that you have forgotten your password and ask to be restored. It's that simple. Forgot your password? Click. Yes, I did. Many people are unwilling to do that. They fight against what God says. They fight against what God has written. And they just, they just stay there putting in the wrong one, putting in the wrong one, putting in the wrong one until they finally find that thing that says access denied. You are blocked out of this website. So the first thing is to admit that you've forgotten your password and then ask to be restored. And what they simply do is to ask you to put in your email address. And once you put in your email address, they send you a link for a new password, and then your password can be restored. I want to ask you as we go off the air today, has your access to heaven been denied lately? Has your access to the blessings that come from heaven been denied lately? Is your relationship with Christ not what it used to be? Have you forgotten how you started your walk like these people that I just read in the book of Revelation? You know what my plea to you today is? Please don't stay locked out of the commonwealth of heaven. Don't stay locked out of the blessings that are yours. The money's in your account. You can't get to it. The information you need is in the website, but you cannot get to it. Why stay away from what is yours? when you can reconnect and have your password restored. Maybe some of you are watching me right now. Your password has been taken away from you. Your access has been taken away from you. You can have restoration right now by doing what the prodigal son did. He came back home and to his surprise, he thought, well, I'm not even sure what daddy would do, but daddy opened his arms wide open and they accepted him back. You can get back to Jesus. You can start using your old password again. You need to pray if you have been locked out of heavenly website because you lost the name of Jesus. You can pray that your password to heaven and your password to the other websites of heaven that brings blessing down will be restored to you today. And I can assure you, God is eager to restore it to you. If you are willing and you are ready, why don't you pray this prayer with me? I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for the relationship I once had with you. I want to go back to having that relationship. I pray that you will restore me 
because your name is the only password that gets me in. You are willing and you are able to take me back. Do so for me right now. That I may have a relationship that is reconnected with God and that is reconnected with my blessings in God's storehouses. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And if you have never known Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can pray where you are too. Not just for restoration, but for a beginning of relationship. Then you'll be free to use that password. He said, whosoever comes, he will in no wise cast out. I pray you will come to him. I pray you will repent of your sins. And I pray you will start a relationship with him from now on. Father, I pray that you'll accept as many as come to you. And let them begin a fresh start with God this year. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. We thank you so much for joining us today. Jesus, yes. That is the password that gives us access to God and everything that God will give unto man. Begin using the name of Jesus and see things change for you this year. We'll be back again next week, God willing. Until then, make sure you take Jesus with you everywhere you go. Bye-bye.